Did you know that evolution does not know when the first living organism developed sexuality of any kind? Did you know that evolution does not know how the first living organism developed sexuality? Or why the first living organism would have developed sexuality? Did you know that evolution does not know how it is that the human race is only reproduced through a complex system of reproductive organisms and cells that require that all of those organisms and cells and systems be in place, working perfectly, and working perfectly at the same time? Therefore, we don't know how it is that the first female and male just happen to appear at the same time with all of their reproductive systems in place and functioning perfectly if evolution is our postulation. Did you know that the human race is just one out of scores of millions of species on the face of the earth who use a distinctive reproductive system requiring both a male and female to reproduce? And did you know that evolution has no solid explanation for any of them? Did you know that there is not one single solitary verified transitionary fossil that even comes close to proving that one kind of living organism evolved into another kind of living organism? Did you know that evolution's best answer to this fossil conundrum is that the totality of the fossil record proves the transitions, since one can obviously see the similarities in different species types through the fossil record? thus proving that one species had to come from another species. <laughs> Did you know that this supposition is about as ridiculous as you visiting a junkyard and finding television parts, microwave parts, washing machine parts, and computer parts, and then declaring categorically that one had to have come from the other because, after all, look how similar the parts appear? Did you know that evolution does not know with any degree of certainty how matter originated, why matter originated, when matter originated, how the universe began, why the universe began, when the universe began, how the solar system was formed, when the solar system was formed, why the solar system was formed, how the first living cell came into being, why the first living cell would even come into being, when the first living cell came into being, how non-life became life, why non-life became life, when non-life became life, how the first single cell became a multi-cell, why the first single cell became a multi-cell, when the first single cell became a multi-cell, how DNA and RNA originated, why DNA and RNA originated, when DNA and RNA originated, how DNA and RNA can exhibit such a complex language with no original and apparent reason to do so, where water came from, why 70% coverage of liquid water on a planet is only located on our planet. Where the common ancestor for man and chimp is located on the evolutionary chain. Why humans alone rule all the other sources of millions of species on the earth. Why humans alone are even capable of thinking about and debating the origins of their species. And why earth and earth alone in the entirety of the known universe is the only planet that contains a single solitary cell of a living organism. Did you know that if you leave the possibility of an intelligent designer out of an origins discussion, that the best the so-called scientific world has come up with is the foundationally flawed and conundrum-riddled declaration of evolution? Do you now see and do you now know that even though evolution is an interesting theory upon which to ponder, it is far from being settled science to the exclusion of all other possible explanations. Creationists, hold your heads up. You have not lost this discussion, not even by a long shot. <laughs>